A really popular niche is all over prints. Here I've got a bunch of romance comics, but you could use anything, posted stamps, money, individual pictures, different designs. The idea here is they overlap and they create this incredible mosaic, which looks really cool on a t-shirt, a coffee mug, any sort of apparel or any sort of print on demand design. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily and for free make this sort of mosaic design. All right, let's have some fun in Inkscape today. Now, if you've never used Inkscape, it's a little intimidating the first time you might see it. Here I've got my background just set to transparent. I've got a bunch of menu items along the left and along the right. And then down at the bottom, I've just got this color palette. Really what I'm gonna be doing today to create this mosaic design is I'm gonna be using the page. Okay, so I'm not so much worried about the individual graphics, but I'm gonna be looking at the page. So first things first, let's set up this page. I'm gonna to go to File, Document Properties, and then I'm going to pick the page, the actual size of it. So I'm going to use an 11 by 17 inches. I'm going to pretend that my client has ordered from me an 11 by 17 print of comic book covers. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to select that. And you can see, whatever I click here, it's going to change the palette size, the, the page size. So you can see here it's just changing it in real time. So all you need to do is just select whatever the 11 by 17 is. There you go. You can also do a custom size as well down at the bottom and you can change it inches, centimeters, all sorts of weird wild stuff. So I'm just gonna keep it easy there. So here I've got my 11 by 17. I'm just gonna scroll out a tiny bit. So here's my actual background. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in. You know what, actually I don't even need to use a transparent background because I'm gonna be exporting the whole picture. So I'm gonna go into document properties again and down at the bottom where it says background color, I'm actually gonna change that to white just so that we can see it a little bit better here. So I'm actually just gonna bring that up to zero, background color white, checkerboard background. I'm just gonna uncollect this and we'll just have just a white background. It just makes it a little easier to see, uh, but I'll be exporting this page. So I'm gonna have stuff leaking out of the side of the page. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna import a couple comic book covers. To import my images, it's pretty easy. You just go up to file and then import. And when I do that, you'll just select whatever folder you have all your images. So here's my images here. I can just select them and you can see there's previews. I've just got romance comic book covers. These are all public domain. And I'm just gonna add all these into my document. So I'll just start with the first one and I'll click open. It's gonna ask me the image dots per inch from the file. I'll say yes, just take it from the file. Image rendering mode smooth, which optimizes quality. And I'll say yes. You can also select this don't ask again button. Doesn't really matter, I'll say yes. And then I'll click okay. So this is now my image. Now what you wanna do with this is you wanna shrink it down because we wanna put a whole bunch of them inside this page. So what you'd wanna do is select the corner one of the corners and you're going to move it down. Now the problem is you can also shrink it, like you can stretch it and shrink it, which is not what we want. So I'm going to do control Z. So what you want to do here is use the control button. So I'm going to hold down the control button and that locks in the ratio for when I make this larger or smaller. See how I move my mouse around? It just makes it the exact same. So now I've got this much smaller. Now I want to make these all the exact same. So if I go file import and I do the second one, this one's gonna come in now. And you've got a choice to make. What you can do is you can just put it on top of the other one and just make it the same size. Pretty close, I mean, it's a scan of a comic book, so it'll be pretty close, but that's pretty good there. That's one option. So you just go file, import, do the next one shrink it down, make sure it's the same general size. So I'll just select this one here. Oh, I'll just move this one out of the way. Move it like that. So you want them like sort of the same size, you know, they don't have to be the exact same. And hey, you might want them all different too. You might want some big images, some small images. If you want them the exact, exact same size, then you can also do view and you can do a page grid and what that will do then is you can actually stick this right on a grid and you can count the number of squares and then you can select the next one and you can make sure it's the same height, for example. So there's like there's different ways you can do it, right? So that's an option there. I'm actually gonna make these a little bit smaller 
just because I want to make sure that I've got a whole bunch of designs. So I think that's a good size I'll use. And I'm just going to use my base here like this and just kind of make them all the same height because they're the same general image. I know that a comic book is generally the same size. I know they're not always the exact same. So now I'm going to just import every single one of these files and I'm going to make them all the same height. So I'm just going to kind of stack them. So I'll, I'm going to do a quick time lapse video here so you can just see them all come in really quickly. Okay, so I've got a bunch of comic book covers now imported in. I left this one over here to the side because the ends of it are really frayed. So I'm just going to use that on the right side because I'm not going to be uh, you know, using this piece here on the end. But basically, you can just click on any individual image and it will highlight it. So what you want to do now is just start placing them in the page. So I'm just going to take this one here, for example, and I'm just going to move it around. Now what you want to do is have them kind of overlapping at random. So it looks like a pile of actual comic books. So what you don't want to do is just stack them all next to each other like this. It just looks really artificial. Now you may want it. Look, I'm not going to tell you how to do your art, but I'm just letting you know if you want to achieve a look of a bunch of comic books all laying on top of each other, this would not be the way to do it. So what you'd want to do here is click once and then click again. That's the key. See the second time I click, now there's these little arrows that pop up. Now I can rotate my picture very easily and I can just move it over to the corner of my design. I'm just going to take this one here now. This one will be underneath. I'll click it a second time and then I can drag it so it looks like that and I'll just move it underneath like say like that. So again, I'm only exporting the page, so this will be cut off when I go to export it. I'll rotate this a little bit. I'll stick it over like that. You don't want, you know, you want it to look somewhat random, right? So I'll do like that, for example. This one will stay like this. Click, click. And then you basically just move them so that they're a little bit off and they're sitting underneath each other. The, the key is not to make it super regimented. So you don't want to have it look like they're all, you know, 45 degree angles or, you know, you want to have like random. Some are going to be really moved like a lot, like that's a lot. Some will be moved a little bit like, like that, for example. That's almost square or almost no, plumb. So I'll do like that, for example move this over here. So it's very like, once you get the images imported, it's actually pretty quick. Now what I really want to be careful of is I don't want to have any white space in the background. Okay. So what you'll do here is as you're going through, you're going to wonder like, hmm, what about like in here? Is there any black, like any weird space? It's hard with these because these are all color comic book covers. So you'd want to really take a good hard look or you can also just go up to file document properties and you can make the background color some outrageous color that isn't in any of these it's hard right because you've got you've got like really like i'm going to do like a neon purple because i don't think that's in any of the colors um, i don't think it is anyway so uh, so far so good and i'll just keep moving along here and I just picked that color at random because I don't think it's sitting in any of these books. So I'm going to do like that. Now, if you want to move this one, say, up to the top, like see how this one's underneath, right? It's because of the order that I imported it. You can move it here. There's these buttons, raise selection to the top, raise it up one step raise it down one step or raise it to the bottom. So if the, I really wanted this one to show above, I just click this first button, raise it to the top, and now it's above the layer. So I would recommend that you do that as well, just so that it increases the random look of it. You can kind of move them all into place, and then you can flip the actual, like I, like I may want this one on top. It totally depends. Like I'm just kind of doing this really quick. But if there was a really you know, nice cover that you wanted to highlight, 
then you could do that as well. Like here, for example, the logos aren't showing up. So you usually start from like the bottom and work your way up because the logos are a little more apparent. See how all these logos, like the actual titles of the comic books are apparent. Whereas here, they're all getting covered by the ones underneath it. So like for this one, for example, I may want to have this down at the bottom of the layer so that you can see more of the actual words on the comic book. Again, it's personal preference. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but like that's tough, right? Because you can't see what it says. So I'm going to keep that one like that. But the next one, I'm going to actually put it on top because I want it to show the the actual logos of the book. Oh, it's good. But if it wasn't, if it was like underneath it like that, then you would just click the button to move it up top. And I actually think, my goodness, I actually think I nailed the number of, I was a bit nervous I wouldn't have enough books, but I think I've actually got okay. I went with, I think, 20 books. So here I've now got it all figured out. And this one is so good. I want to keep this one too. So I'm going to put it right at the top and I'm going to lay it right on top of everything to make it really look random. So I'll just move it like that. Actually, see how they, so, okay, so here's like me looking in real time. These are all, these three books are all kind of the same. So I'm going to move this one so that it is going opposite way. So I'm going to stick that right in the middle. So there we go. There is my pastiche. And we can see here there's a little tiny piece here that I didn't do. So I'm going to cover that. There's a little tiny piece here. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move this over. And now you can see here. So you kind of have to like, it's like a puzzle, right? You kind of have to fill in all the pieces. And then I'm just going to move this one down here. Because ultimately, you want to make sure there's no purple hiding in any of the thing. And there's, as soon as I said that, there's a purple there. Okay, good. Okay, so we're good. So I don't see any, oh, there's a purple right there. Darn it. Okay, so I'm going to move this over. This is really what is most time consuming. But if you get enough designs, you should be fine. Well, now I feel like a bit of a loser because I said there was way too many I had too many. I'm going to import one more picture here. I'm going to import and I'll pick this one here. And I'll just make it smaller. Man, talk about getting too cocky. Eh? I thought that it was, I uh, thought I had it, but I was short one. Okay, so there we go. So now I've got everything all covered and we're good. Okay, so now I'm going to export this as a page i'm not exporting it as an individual picture as an individual like if like that's a selection for example i just selected this one that's a selection that's a selection well i'm not exporting the selection i'm exporting the whole page so i'm going to go over to the right hand side and there's an option right here that says export this document as a selection as a png image and that's what i want to do so i'm going to select that and here's the key if i were to export it just like this. I actually have this selection selected. That's not what I want. I want to go to page because the page was that underlying 11 by 17 that I've got. And you'll notice as soon as I selected page, the image size is all changed because I'm actually exporting the whole image now, which is the page. Okay. And I've got my file set up here. I'm going to call it romance comic book cover and then I'm going to hit save and now it's exporting this page that's 11 by 17. Okay and let's see how it looks. I'm just going to open up the PNG file here and I'm just going to move it over so we can see it and that is my 11 by 17 page. So I'm just going to zoom it in. You can see it's pretty nice high quality. Now, if I was being really picky about this, the individual comic book cover scans, I would clip them. Like I would go through each one and trim them because there's black and there's white. But I mean, overall though, I mean, I think this looks pretty good for the purposes of this walkthrough. But this is how you would do it. So now I've got an 11 by 17 print. And then from here, you can basically print it to a piece of paper, poster stock. You can put it on apparel like a t-shirt, um, you know, coffee mug, that sort of thing. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Quick little walkthrough on how to do a pastiche. Very easy in Inkscape. You don't have to overthink it. Just make sure that you randomize where you place them, stick them on an angle, and then bump up and down the layers so that it looks truly random. 
Hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching.